All right, Fiona, yeah. one more thing before we get this started. I want to go over what everyone's going to learn today. So here's a quick little um, overview. Today we're going to cover how to raise chickens in your fancy smancy backyard, what structures the chickens need to live in, what types of eggs um, you'll be getting, how to raise chickens in different types of weather, what they eat, how to clean up chicken poop. I was very curious on that. And also, we're going to take a virtual tour of the chicken coop. Yay. Yay. All right, Fiona, without further ado, I'll let you um, go ahead and just chat, talk it out for a little bit. We'll follow along. I'll be right here. And then we'll do some um, Q&A at the end. That sounds terrific. Thank you, Anne-Marie. See you next really happy uh, to be here with you. Uh, and talk to the community of chickens. Um, they are uh, such an addition to our lives. I got uh, chickens when my kids were in preschool uh, because uh, one of their classes raised them from eggs, from fertile eggs in the classroom and then had them hatch and then raised them as little baby chickens and then, or baby chicks and then put them outside and would have families sign up to adopt them at the end of the year. And so the first year when my son was in that class, I was too chicken to do it myself. Uh, but two years later, when my daughter was in that class, I thought, oh, I can do this, be mom of the year and, uh, and teach my chicken, teach my children. I do that all the time. Teach my children about how to raise uh, chickens. And what happened was, let's see, my son was five at the time and my daughter was three and they could care less, uh, but I fell in love. And uh, it has been love ever since then. Um, they're not at all the way I expected them to be. I thought they would just sort of sit around uh, all day, lay an egg, uh, eat some food, and then that was it. Um, but that's just not true at all. They've all got their own personalities. They've all got their own interests. Uh, they have their favorite foods um, and they're just really fun to watch and they're different at different times of the day in the morning they're pretty active and they have a lot to say uh, because they're laying eggs and they want to get out of the coop and get uh, in the evening they're a lot more mellow and a lot more chill and you tend to see them doing things like um, just sort of sunbathing or uh, sometimes if I sit out here and watch them, they'll come up and try and get my glass of wine or whatever I have. Um, but they're, they've been way more interesting and way more intricate than I had expected them to be. Um, I mentioned that my son was five uh, when we got them. He's 14 now. And something I can tell to the parents in the room um, is that it was really, really neat to have this to talk about with my son, because as he's grown up, uh, he has been interested in uh, pretty much video games. That's it. Uh, he can talk about video games 24 seven. He can play them 24 seven. And uh, he has sort of gotten more into chickens over the last year um, because we were raising some from babies uh, when, starting last November. Joe's coming in for a little meal here too. And uh, we raised them in his room at first because you have to keep them super warm when they're just born. They have to uh, mimic the way their mama would keep them. And he was on Zoom school. And so he would take our baby chicks, you know, distance learning. And so he would take baby chicks to uh, school every morning, quote unquote, with him during breaks and things. And he would just put them on the keyboard and everything in the whole class got to know our chickens and got to know our, uh, you know, their growth and their stories as we were going on. And it was something pretty cool. And if you have a teenager who can only talk about uh, video games, it's really nice to be able to add another subject to the repertoire. So uh, don't give up on your teenagers. <laughs> They'll come back if they develop enough of an interest. And that was Joe just uh, helping us out. Um, they are not the longest lived sometimes. Uh, everything loves chickens and they're really susceptible to predators. So you have to uh, accept the responsibility of protecting them. 
from the predators in your area. Um, a lot of people think that cats are a problem from them, uh, for them, but I can tell you that's not the case. Uh, dogs seem to be the biggest predator for chickens. And then in our area, we have coyotes. So we just have to make sure they're locked up at night safely. Um, in other areas, people have hawks, and so they need to protect their chickens from above. In other areas, people have things that dig, like foxes, and so you need to uh, make sure that your coop has uh, what's called hardware cloth or something else that you can uh, put a couple of feet down uh, in the dirt so that nothing can dig into your coop at night. Um, and I have also heard stories of snakes in the coop, but those don't tend to be such a big deal for your chickens. They do tend to be a big deal for your eggs. Um, so I'll show you our coop in just a couple of minutes. But I know um, something that people were interested in too is like what kinds of chickens to get. And um, that, a lot of that depends on where you live. So we're in uh, sunny Southern California. Um, it does not get cold here, so I don't have to worry about any frostbite or anything, but chickens who have really big combs, um, you know, the things that make them look like roosters on top of their head, like Pepper has what's called a rose comb, and it's just that, I know, honey, you want to eat. It's just that very short, shallow um, thing right on top of her head. So she would be a great breed for a cold area. I'm sorry, did I offend your dignity? You can go ahead and eat. Um, so someone with like a comb close to their head, like Pepper has, she's a Colombian lion dog. Uh, she would be good for a cold weather, um, cold weather family. Whereas if you have a, a chicken with a really big comb, that's much better for uh, a warm weather area. Or like in warm weather, I tend to stay away from breeds that have feathers on their feet uh, because those just tend to make them warmer um, and more susceptible to heat stroke. But if you're in a cold area, uh, feathers on the feet can, can be great. So um, another thing about the breeds is that uh, it, it makes a difference in how many eggs you get a year and how uh, colored the eggs are. So like we have brought kind of a special egg to show you guys and I'll show you the nesting box later, but this is kind of a, a cool one that you don't see very often. And this is uh, actually, I'm just kidding. It's a ceramic egg. And so this is something that you can put in uh, the nest box to let the chickens know that it's a safe place for them to lay because they'll copy something another chicken has done. So people will use ceramic eggs to try and break chickens of the habit of eating eggs, which they'll do if they find out they're delicious, and to um, let them know that it's a safe place for them to lay. And they tend to follow each other. Like we put up a second nesting box um, when we had a bunch of our, our girls who were born in November, hatched in November, um, because we thought, well, there's gonna be all this traffic in the nest box. And what happens is it doesn't matter how many nest boxes you put up, they all vie for the same one uh, anyway. So we've seen sort of traffic jams in our nest boxes on a regular basis, but we still keep the second one in there because we're hoping they'll, they'll uh, figure it out. But the breeds are really important uh, if you care about how many eggs you're going to get or the colors or anything else. And I like having a lot of diversity and a lot of variety in our chickens, um, partly because that helps me tell who's laying and who's not. So when we started with chickens, we just had um, uh, three of them and they were laying brown, medium brown eggs. And so I couldn't tell who was laying and who wasn't. And right now we have green eggs, we have blue eggs, we have dark brown eggs, we have medium eggs. Uh, it's really pretty cool to see the variety. Um, that you can get. And it also makes it easy to take your, to tell your chickens apart uh, if they're all sort of different colors with different combs and, and everything like that. So if you're going to start raising chickens, you know, I would start with a minimum of three because they're super social uh, animals and they don't like to be alone. Um, they don't thrive if they're alone. 
that. So if you're going to start, start with three, just in case something happens to one, then you still have two and they can hang out together. Um, they, it sounds funny to say that they're so social, they are, but they also will uh, peck at each other and be kind of mean to each other sometimes. And that is literally uh, what's called pecking order. And you might've heard that term before, but all these chicken terms you've ever heard are absolutely true. Pecking order, coming home to roost, uh, all of that kind of stuff is, is true. And you can watch it come, uh, come true in, in what your girls are doing and what you're watching. Um, one thing about feeding them is you mostly want to feed them good quality layer food. Uh, and that gives them a lot of calcium for nice, strong eggshells, but you can also feed them eggshells. I do it all the time. And I just, uh, you know, sort of bake them for 10 minutes at 250 or something in the oven. And it makes it nice and easy to crush them um, because you don't want them to realize they're eating egg uh, because otherwise they'll just skip the middleman and start doing it in their nest uh, or their nesting box. And you want those eggs, not, uh, giving them to the chickens. So um, they can also have, though, a lot of the things from your refrigerator that maybe are a little old for your family uh, to eat, but you don't want to waste the food. So they're really, really good at getting rid of leftovers. And one of the most surprising leftovers that uh, a lot of people don't realize you can give chickens is uh, chicken. So if you have like a rotisserie chicken or something like that, and you uh, eaten what you want to. A lot of people will put out uh, the, the remains outside and you'll watch the chickens go at it like the little dinosaurs they are. Um, they actually are uh, carnivores if they get a chance to be. And I've heard lots of stories of them catching uh, and dispatching things like lizards and mice and stuff like that. Um, but they have their favorites too. And I always say, and I learned this because my boy was five when we got uh, chickens for the first time. I always say a chicken will eat anything a five-year-old boy will eat. So think goldfish crackers, Cheerios, uh, macaroni and cheese. They love spaghetti, um, basically anything. And what you can't feed them is a pretty short list of things, fortunately. You shouldn't give them avocado. Um, you shouldn't give them things like onions. Um, you are, there are a lot of people who won't give them apples, um, but that's because apple seeds have trace amounts of, did they eat five-year-old boys? Thank you, uh, Lee. Not in my experience, but I wouldn't put it past them. Um, and what else can you, oh, the apple seeds have trace amounts of arsenic in them and so if you're concerned about it just take the apple seeds out but there's nothing wrong with feeding them apples um, although you do want most of their calories to come from good quality layer feed so i'm going to keep talking but i'm actually going to turn the the camera around because i want you to meet everybody and get a chance to see them eating some of this uh sort of unusual stuff so let me give this a try There we go. And Anne-Marie, you can tell me if that's not good, but let me start by putting out uh, some hummus for them. So this is just sort of random stuff that we got from uh, the refrigerator. And so this is going to attract a lot of attention. And then also, some watermelon that got a little bit old. Hi Fiona, can we move the camera back or push the food out so we can watch them gobble gobble? Of course. The chicken gobble? Yay! Is that better? No, now we see the edge of the table. Okay, let's try that. Yeah. That? Great. Yeah. 
if we can move the hummus bowl out further, that'd be awesome. But if not, this will. Yeah. I'm gonna jump the camera. You know that spot? How's that? Yes. Great. So what I'm going to give them a bit of too, as far as treats go, are some grapes and they absolutely love these. And my guests always absolutely love feeding these to the girls by hand. There we go. And we have, you can see they like grapes. So that is, let's see. There's Joe, who you met before. And then here, this is Tempest. She was named by my daughter. And this one, well, let's see. We'll just see who gets here first. So this is Stormy, also named by my daughter. And then this is the famous Pasty Butt, the one that you mentioned. And Pasty Butt was named by my son. You can always tell in our house who named which bird because like the first ones we got when I had a three-year-old girl and a five-year-old boy uh, were Princess Blueberry, uh, Angry Birds, and Hollandaise. And so you can guess who uh, was naming which one in that case. There we go. You can see them well. My son tends to name them after uh, video games. We've had a Minecraft and, as I said, Angry Birds. There we go. And their absolute favorite treat is <clears throat> dried mealworms. And even after raising chickens for nine years i still cannot stand touching these uh by hand and so i just let them go for it mealworms have a ton of protein uh which is really good for your birds and this particular batch also likes um our passion fruit vine which is something that we've never experienced before and has been really funny for us to watch because it's interesting to see um, what they've done to our passion fruit vine. And Anne Marie is actually going to be able to play a clip uh, that I sent her that I filmed yesterday afternoon that shows you uh, uh, what they do to it and what they've done to it. There we go. And somebody uh, of them, uh, or somebody, sorry, in our group is going to get a chance to guess how high my chickens jump. And uh, the winner gets, and you have to come collect it, it's not going to be shipped to you. But the winner gets uh, a dozen eggs from our chickens and also gets a one night stay at our Airbnb in Pasadena, California. And what you, the question you're being asked is how high do my chickens jump? I'm gonna, we're gonna, sh should we watch the video now, Fiona? Cause we've got about five minutes. So we'll watch the video and then let's check out the chicken coop. And then um, let's take a couple questions. Yeah. Okay, so we're. I'm gonna play the video, everyone, right now, for you. Oh, these are already guessing. Oh, good. Okay, Anne here we go. All right. Yeah. I mean, I can see them right now. They see my screen though, because I'm gonna play the video. Great. Okay, I'm great. going to okay. move over to the coop. Yay! All right, let's watch this video. <laughs> I didn't know a chicken could jump. Did it, does it, did anyone know that? Fiona, I <laughs> Okay. I want to we're going to watch that one more time and then Fiona whenever you're ready you can um you can show us. Okay, I'm going to replay one more time and then I'll stop this and we should be in the chicken coop by them. Oh, we got some good guesses. All right. Terrific. I know there's one more jump. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing everybody. 
All right, Fiona, you're on. Great. Thank you. So this is our nesting box, and you can, this is two days worth of eggs so far. Um, you can see one of these is popular, and one of these is not. <laughs> so I wasn't making it up about they all sort of like to go their own way. And you can see, I know someone said something about green eggs and ham. You can see the green egg in there. Uh, that's And these are partridge olive egger. And so it lays that beautiful uh, sort of olive green egg. And the dark brown one over to the left uh, is uh, from Joe. She's a Morance and they're famous for laying dark brown eggs. And so it's really kind of fun because we can not only say that these are terrific uh, fresh eggs from our chickens, but a lot of times we can tell you by name uh, who laid your breakfast. I'm gonna stop video now and go back to the table so we don't give anybody motion sickness. Beautiful. That was so cool to see. All right. In the last four minutes, let's do one question while you're um, doing that and then we'll get to the um we'll get to the uh the prize. Okay, so I saw a good question in here, and this question is from Amber. So Fiona, Amber asks, any tips to stop super, I'm gonna butcher this word, broody chickens. Mm -hmm. I think that's the right word. My two it are is. both referring to leave the box and have stopped laying oh no amber and then she says they also seem to hate me all of a sudden <laughs> I'm sorry well, amber i can't help you with your your chicken's anger issues i'm sorry to hear about that um but broody i can help you with so pepper used to go broody quite a quite a bit she's sort of um a little too old to lay eggs now she's in retirement but we have, we have pasty butt actually also goes broody quite a bit. And uh, pasty butt, by the way, is a condition that chicks uh, can get. I'll, I'll, I'll let you look it up yourselves in the interest of time. Um, but broody is a couple of things. So a broody chicken is a chicken who wants to be a mom. And so she's still laying eggs, but uh, she doesn't lay her egg and just sort of take off. Uh, she lays her egg and she sits on it because the idea is she wants to hatch it. So that's what a broody chicken is for anybody wondering. And the way to stop them, uh, or the way I've been successful is two things. You just keep taking them off the nest and putting them next to food and water until they get interested in it. A broody hen will sort of tune everything else out and just try and sit there and be a good mom. Um, if they still keep going back in to the nesting box and they won't leave it alone, um, I have closed the coop door that they can't get in and get back on the nest. Um, that helps a lot. Another thing that happens with broody chickens that I think is really, really interesting is apparently they get really hot when they're sitting there on the nest all the time. And so it kind of literally puts them out of their minds. And so if you can carry her around a little bit and let some air circulation get under, uh, under her, um, a lot of times that sort of helps break the broodiness, but you just have to be really consistent with not letting her sit on the, um, on the nest. Most chicken things I find right down over nine years can be treated easily and uh, by you. There's not a lot of sort of vet information you need. Uh, most things can be fixed with, uh, you know, air cir circulation, good clean, uh, nesting boxes and uh, uh, for anybody who has chickens, you should have the Terracin, which is a spray that you can put on wounds. It's antimicrobial or antibacterial. And I've had a chicken come back from a coyote attack uh, using the Terracin in just uh, a little, a little me time, a coyote attack. And you also actually should have a, what I call a chicken hospital. Uh, we keep a cat carrier around uh, with some flakes in it. And then if there's any sort of injury or illness, uh, you wanna separate them. Cause like I mentioned, they're not very kind to each other. And if they have, uh, if they see an injury, a lot of times they'll uh, peck a chicken, peck their friend and make it worse. Good question. I hope that helped. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So Tarant says, I have a separate coop for broody girl sick chickens. Absolutely. If you have the room, if you have the fancy schmancy uh, in your back, that's terrific. 
can't separate them. Mean people do that. I learned so much, Fiona. Thank you Not so much. <laughs> no. We are right at time, but let's go ahead and see if we can uh, select this winner. So everyone uh, put their, I know I saw the answers in chat. So the question was, how high can Fiona's chickens jump? All right. And we saw a bunch of answers. And so we'll get to the question right now. Let's see the result. That's the result. 32, a little over 32 inches or 83 centimeters. And that conversion is three feet, 28 inches. Is that right? I think mm -hmm. I did the math No, right. it would be less, a little, little less than uh, three feet. It would be about two, two feet, eight and five eighths, I think. 36 inches is three feet if I'm doing that right. I don't know, anyone know math? You probably are right. Six divided by. You're right. So it's just right under that. Okay. Two feet. Let's see. We'll take a peek and look in the, oh, Angie says 2.5. Does that sound about right? 2.5 feet. Well, 2.5 feet would be 30, right? So if 30 is the closest answer, I think we have a winner. We also have a two feet six. Okay. We're going to have to go and look. That's the same that. answer. Is that? 2.5 yes. and 2.6? I should have well, had my math before <laughs> <ready>, everyone. I'm <laughs> very, very sorry about that. My bad. But yay! Someone's going to win, and I'll reach out. A dozen eggs, one night stay at the chicken farm, and all you can eat and cook breakfast. Oh, 32 is 2. Point, thanks, thank you, Turrent. Let's see. And who got under that? 2.6. More if we have a tie, Henry, I will. Should we do it? There can be two prize winners if we have a, an exact tie. Well, we have one is 0. 0.1 inches over the other, so oh, we have a winner. But I, yes, we have a winner. <laughs> Ortiz, I'll be reaching out to you. Very excited. And Fiona, thank you so much for your time today. That's all we had time for. That went by really fast, right? Really did. Thank you. I didn't even get to talk about poop. What? How did we not even cover poop? That's what I really wanted to hear about. But we learned so much. I hope you all did too. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of um, their evening or their day, wherever they may be. And see you all back here at CMX Summit Rise tomorrow for the final day. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. Thanks, Fiona.